course, folks might remember when we had, of course, the Joint Center for Political and Economic Studies as well as the National Urban League on this show. Uh, highly critical, the fact uh, that Republicans, they had more uh, black staffers on the U.S. Senate side than Democrats did. And so, guess what? This weekend, uh, I was a keynote speaker on Sunday night. Uh, at the New York Association of Black and Puerto Rican Lawmakers. Looks like Senate Leader Chuck Schumer heard their cries. He announced at that particular gala that they will be implementing the Rooney Rule in the United States Senate when it comes to the top Senate staff positions. I caught up with him backstage. Here's what he had to say. So, Senator, you just announced uh, the uh, placement of the Rooney Rule. Explain what you're going to do. Yes. Uh, we need much more diversity on our staff in the Senate, among Democrats, in the House, too, across the board. And so I am instituting, as minority leader, the Rooney Rule. The Rooney Rule was instituted in pro football, named after Rooney, the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it says for every major position, you have to interview a person of color. And as a result, we have seen in pro football lots of the coaches and lots of the um, uh, managers and uh, whatever Jerry Reese is called. General managers are people of color. Well, we want the same thing to happen in the U.S. Senate. And so we are also going to have demographic counting to see how we're doing. And I'm not going to rest till diversity gets a lot better in the Senate. And obviously the Joint Center and the National Urban League and others have been pushing for that uh, yes, because the Republicans, frankly, outrank Democrats in diversified staffers. It is a shame and it's going to change. Well, folks, to give you a sense of how bad it is, let's go to the graphics, please. Uh, black Senate staff, African-Americans make up 13.3% of all folks in this country. Top Senate staff positions, 0.09%. Uh, you know, you look at that number and you see it now. People of color on a Senate staff, 37.9% people of color in America. Top Senate staff, 7.1%. The Senate's top five black staffers, folks, watch this graphic. One Democrat, four Republicans. Let's go to, uh, let's go to um, Spencer Overton with the Joint Center who joins us with us. Don Cravens also uh, heads the Washington Bureau of the National Urban League. Spencer, starting with you, uh, it's interesting, Chuck Schumer uh, went before that audience and announced that. Uh, that was already in my speech. Right. I was going to hit him hard on that <laughs> issue, and so he lucked up making that announcement before I spoke. <laughs> yeah. well, well, I need to just thank you for your leadership on this in terms of your coverage on this. And I watched your speech here, and you were strong on this issue, holding folks accountable. I'll tell you, uh, uh, Roland, I used to listen to, to, to Malcolm Tapes when I was in, at Hampton in college. I think today kids are going to be listening to, to Roland uh, uh, Tapes in audio. You were holding <laughs> folks accountable. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Don, I want to bring you in on this. I mean, look, bottom line is it's embarrassing that Democrats want black folks to be political sharecroppers, and that is uh, coming out here, getting their votes, and these Senate Democrats refuse to even interview African Americans. For there to be four black staffers on the GOP side and one on the Democratic side is an abomination. It really is, Roland, and good morning to you and the panel. Look, it, it's an abomination. I, Don Cravens, was the last black person to serve as a chief of staff in the United States Senate for a Democrat. That was in 2013. Since then, there has not been another African American to serve as a chief of staff or a comms director for a Democratic member of the United States Senate. That's an abomination. It's an embarrassment. We've had an election since then where the Democratic members of the Senate uh, many of whom were running in states that, that had large African-American populations. They, they knew how to find us for votes. They knew how to find us during election time. But for some reason, there's been a disconnect when it comes time for hiring. I'm very, I'm, I'm very encouraged. And I think Senator Schumer is, is a man of his word. I would only caution to say, uh, Brother Martin, that we need you to continue the, 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 the pressure. And you said this the last time I was on your show. It's time to put some pressure on some people. I believe Senator Schumer is going to do everything he can to institute the Rooney Rule. But remember, every senator is elected by their state. They really don't have to follow um, a rule that a, a, a guidance put out by Senator Schumer. They can still do uh, what they want to do. And then secondly, if the positions aren't vacant, right, when, when a chief of staff resigns, and the, the, the positions aren't posted, well, then the Rooney Rule really doesn't matter, right? The Rooney Rule matters only when there's a vacancy, and we know there's a vacancy. 
and then there's a list of candidates that are put out, and we want to make sure that one of those candidates or two of those candidates are people of color. But if you don't have a process, then the Rooney Rule really doesn't work. So I also want to see Senator Schumer's leadership and what will the process right. be with their vacancies for senior positions. Spencer, what are those top four positions so our audience knows exactly what they are? Yeah, there are three that are in the personal offices, chief of staff, legislative director, and communications director. And then there is one that's a committee position. The top committee position is the staff director. Right now, there are no black staff directors at all of, of all 39 of the staff directors. Uh, let, me, let me also say this, uh, Roland, uh, right now, uh, Senator Harris is the only Democrat that has a black top staffer. So 163 Democratic staffers, top staffers, and only one is black. That's Harris, right? We got states like Maryland that are 30 percent black. And you don't have, Cardin doesn't have a black top staffer in D.C., and neither does Van Hollen. Uh, both of these folks face challenges against, by black folks in the Democratic Party uh, primary were, were supported mm -hmm. by black folks uh, in the Democratic uh, primary here and don't have top black staff. Don, you and others actually delivered resumes to the Senate. So when people say, oh, we can't find them, y'all said, no problem, we've already found them for you. That's right. What we try to do, Roland, is send very, very key high-level resumes uh, to these senators. And what we did is we targeted not only Democratic senators, but all senators that have uh, large minority populations in the state. And what we've said to them is, look, we've got a link. Spencer and his crew at the Joint Center, they've got plenty of resumes. The old myth of we can't find qualified African Americans for these positions, it's, it's just that. It's a myth. There are absolutely men and women uh, some who worked on the Hill and left the Hill, some who went to the administration and are now looking for jobs, and also men and women who are currently serving as chiefs of staff in the United States House of Representatives. I mean, think about it, Roland. If you were looking for a qualified person of color to interview for a communications director position, you simply could walk across the street and go to a House member, maybe one of your delegation members, and say, I'm looking for a young man, a young woman of color to interview for a comms director position. There's several in the House of Representatives. We've got the largest black caucus in the history right. uh, of the Congress. And so they're, they're definitely qualified young men and young women who are out there. And I do want to applaud Senator Harris, who was just elected, as you know, Roland, in November. And at least she has uh, that one African-American legislative director, but but she's done her part. I mean, she came in, uh, right, hit the ground running, and made sure that her office was diverse. Yeah. Where are our friends who've been there in Congress for many years? Avis, real quick here, again, the bottom line is this here, uh, African-Americans uh, should be blasting Senate Democrats, every single one of them saying, uh, enough is enough when it comes to political sharecropping. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of what I do professionally is around this issue of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this is not unusual. We have a problem in this country across the board in terms of having people of color ascend to top leadership positions. And the fact that you have the D Democratic Party, which quite frankly lives or dies on the back of the black vote, specifically shut out um, particularly black people in top level of positions is particularly insulting. It's not an issue issue of lack of ambition. It's not an issue of lack of ability. It's an issue of lack of opportunity, and they need to step up to the plate. And, and Roland, let me, let me just quickly say here, the Rooney Rule is an important first step in terms of Senator Schumer. I'm so glad that he did it. The question is, how is it going to work in practice? So, for example, can you satisfy the Rooney Rule just by interviewing white women and not interviewing any African Americans or Latinos? How will, the devil is in the details, how will it work in practice? Well, I, I, well, well, I will say this here. I will say this here. I think, I think the step uh, Don uh, and Spencer is to make that call today to Senator Schumer's office because he said that he's going to put the rules in place. I think at their meeting, uh, he said next Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, so next I don't week. believe it's to uh, tomorrow. So I would say this week, uh, let's put this call into him and say, no, we want to sit down with you before you make this announcement and go through that particular process and don't leave it up to chance. That's the next thing I think we should do. All right, Roland. You agree? All we right. want to help. We want to be helpful. We got, all right. No, no, we don't want to be helpful. 
we want to be clear <laughs> that this is what they're going to do. So, uh, so we've got some homework. So, Don uh, and Spencer, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. We will keep focus on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.